Okay, so we're back in lockdown, unfortunately. Hopefully only this time for a short period. But we still like to try and actually give you some simple, straightforward um, repair jobs you can do at home yourself, particularly when it's actually getting cold as it is now, so you can bring something inside a room in the house. What we're going to look at today is repairing laser foils. The, la the original laser foils that the first 200,000 lasers had, laser twos, laser 2000s on, uh, on the older ones, older fevers, actually have foam injected uh, foils. They're very, very easy and very prone to break on the edges. How many of us have got a laser rudder or scent board with a chunk out, the, out, out of it or the corner knocked off? Very easy, happens a lot. And for quite often the keen amateur finds them very difficult to repair. But in actual fact, if you, if you follow the steps we're gonna show you now, it is actually reasonably straightforward to do. And most of us are quite capable of doing this at home. Just there are quite a number of stages to go through. Don't try and take any shortcuts or the, follow this all the way through. I hope this will be of help to you. If you're stuck about any stage, please give us a ring or an email and we will try and help you out. Or alternatively, if you'd really like to know any further, you can always come on one of our repair courses, which once lockdown is finished, will be running again. Enjoy the video. The big problem with laser foils or similar style for similar style for boats, uh, other classes, is when they break off like this, there is a very narrow cross section to which to try and bond onto, which is why frequently the repairs fail if you just try to bond onto there. You've got leverage out here, which very easily breaks away, which is why we're actually going to try and input some little pins into here to actually be firmly fixed to the main central case and when we put the repair material in it will fall around those those pins and actually vastly increase the chance of the repair succeeding in fact in the center of these laser foils there's two iron rods they put in when they're making them again for the foam to form around them whilst they get uh, curing and that's quite often why you get little rust spots appearing in your centerboard so the first thing you first thing we're going to have to do is we're using a little dremel dremel is an extremely useful tool uh, to have it's very easy to maneuver and stick and um and ha have a multitude of different fittings you can put on the end as you can see what we're doing here to start with is heavily sanding down the broken cross section you can see me it's actually neatly changed color because it's actually got a very weathered surface we have to get rid of all the loose fragments that are still still might be attached just holding on there's no point trying to bond onto onto those as mentioned earlier on this is an extremely narrow cross section to try and bond onto so what we're going to do here is carefully drill into um, there to actually uh, put pins in and in actual fact the pins we're going to use are actually wheel spokes uh, you're very easy to get hold of they're very easy to cut to length but make sure they are clean ones um, don't use old ones set clean on a bike preferably go to a little bike shop and, and they really do not cost very much money so be very careful the angle you're drilling in so you don't come through the you don't come through the side and this is all about increasing the likelihood of the, of the repair actually st staying in place so we said we'll, we'll, we'll cut this spoke to length then as you can see by carefully picking the right drill bit they'll fit into there cut them to length we'll insert three, three of them in these are permanently fixed then to the center board the repair material we're going to use will then bond onto this as it's going off and rapidly increase the chances of it working so yeah simple just a simple pair of little wire cutters. As you can see, you just put them in, put them in and judge it to, to the length you don't want them to project beyond what the new straight line would be. Um, and there we go. That's, that's, the, that's the pins ready. Okay, so as well as um, the uh, pins, we're actually going to even um, give ourselves more confidence that, that we're going to hold the um, new material in place, repair material in place. We're here using the Dremel again here to make a recessed fringe around the damage area. Um, and what we're going to do on to, once we've applied the repair material into the broken section, once that's gone off and we've sanded it, we will then fiberglass across onto this recess that we're just create, creating here 
onto the new repair material so that it is bonded right across. Um, so we, we, we are bonding onto the repair material which with fiberglass which is then held onto the recessed area significantly increasing the likelihood of the, re of the repair lasting and not being levered off. So we're now going to uh, actually bond into position those pins. We're really making sure here that they, they don't come out. So we're going to use polyester resin, very simple. Just pour some of this out in, into the cup. You don't need very much. Okay, that, that will be more than enough. Everything we use here is going to be disposable, unfortunately. You can't re reuse these, these things. This is a catalyst. In there is an inhibitor that's stopping the, the resin going off in air. All the catalyst is going to do is actually remove that, that inhibitor so it will now go off. So I've just put some, some catalyst into the lid because that simply makes it easier to pour out. And I'm just going to dribble in. It's only 2% by volume. That's all you need on this. We don't have to measure it out. It's a pretty approximate. I mean, literally, that was probably about eight drops into that. Okay, and then we're going to mix it together to make sure the catalyst gets right the way through. Through, take about fifteen seconds. Okay, get everything ready beforehand. Even where it's this coat, coat today, you've probably only got about fifteen minutes before that resin stops going off. Okay, so having mixed it in, wouldn't stir again. That's going to be thrown away afterwards. Literally, just coat it with uh, each one with some of that resin. You don't need very much, as you can tell, which is why we really didn't mix much up in that cup. And just push them back in. Don't have to actually use force or hammer them in at this point. The, the resin will, bond, will hold them in place whilst, whilst it's going off. Okay, so now we're going to actually mix up some resin to actually fill this area. As you can see, we've already put a piece of, of wide masking tape on the underside of here. That will actually help it form against the flat level which both will stop it flowing out but also actually partly form the new shape for us quite happily we're still going to use polyester resin as as before but this time we're going to add into it various fillers now this is this is glass fiber strands chopped off now you can just simply do you can buy this as a milled product or you could actually just simply when you get some glass fiber which you'll need for the repair just roll it up and cut it with scissors into small pieces. And this actually helps bulk, bulk it up and give it strength. And in a similar way, we're also going to add in colloidal silica, very strange, same strange name, but actually on the screen now, we'll be coming up the, how to spell it, so you don't have to try and work that out. Um, again, this is a bulking agent, a filling agent, to actually uh, help f uh, fill up this void, give it some body and some strength, and so it doesn't flow or flow out um, whilst it's going off. So as before, just squeeze out some polyester resin into um, a pretty robust plastic cup. If you go too cheap and too thin on them, it will literally just melt it. Okay, so we're going to add into this some of that, some of the chopped up glass fibre, only a pretty small amount there. Just stir that in a bit. Okay. Okay, we're just literally sprinkling in some of the colloidal silica. I was going to work, work that in. And this is just to give it a bit more body, uh, a bit more and a bit more strength, but bulking it out just to so it doesn't quite flow as much, but actually really fill up the this this space. Okay, as before, we're going to add in the catalyst now. This only approximately 2% by volume. So we're not, if we're going to do big quantities, we would weigh this, but on this sort of, on this sort of quantity, you, you don't have to measure it at all. Just spend some time just stirring that catalyst actually in, so it actually gets right the way around. If you forget to put the catalyst in and come back the next day and it's still as wet as ever, just admit defeat and actually go, okay, that was a bit silly, and 
just take all the all the material out and start again. Literally, don't try and drip catalyst onto it and hope that it will actually it will go off. So once we've mixed it in, we're just going to literally spatula this in. No great science to this, or no great technique. Just literally get get in working it in so it will fill around there. As you can see, it 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 bond it forms around those pins that we've already got into place. And whilst, whilst before it goes off, we're just literally going to roll, roll that over. Again, so it actually helps form, already form the shape and a flat edge.